What's up, Gabe Streamcast Guy here, and it's time to talk about The Last of Us 2 spoilers, because this game is extremely controversial. It seems like people are kind of debating if this is good or bad, but more importantly, I've seen a lot of talk about the story specifically. A lot of us can agree that the combat is decent, the graphics are phenomenal, but the plot and the writing, some of this downright doesn't make sense. Now, if you don't want to watch a video that has a bunch of spoilers in it, I did do a review of this just a couple days ago, and I just want to thank everybody. This review has kind of gone viral. Uh, in fact, it even ended up on the trending page of YouTube, which has never happened before. That is a very big deal. Thank you, everybody that's been sharing my content and subscribing. I cannot thank you all enough. But now, let's get into this and really break down the story piece by piece and how I feel like this game definitely does not deliver. Now, the thing we have to point out here right at the start, a lot of the advertising for The Last of Us Part Two, in my opinion, they lied. And why I say that is because if you look at a lot of the original reveal trailers and story teases and stuff, they did something that was definitely misleading. In a lot of these trailers, if you look at a side-by-side -side of what they showed before release and what is actually in the game, they flat out changed stuff. They altered lines, they changed it so that Joel would look younger, so it's seem like he was in later parts of the game, these trailers are intended to try and lie to you. And to me, that's annoying. It definitely feels like false marketing, but the bigger lie is the fact that only part of this game really involves Ellie. A big chunk of this, nearly half of the entire experience, is dedicated to a new character named Abby. Now, Abby is somebody that is a big, brawny lady who is just out here to try and get revenge, but the downside is that her revenge is murdering Joel. Now, clearly the writer of this game is Neil Druckmann, and he probably thought that he was the master of the pen. He thought that he could make this big, sweeping narrative where people are the good guy and the bad guy. I hate the story in this game, and specifically, I very much despise Abby because she beats to death Joel. And somehow, the fact that the developers of this game thought that somehow we could relate to Joel's killer is just so baffling. Now let's go through this and see why this is going on. Now the key detail that I think we have to realize is that this game tries to constantly pivot back and forth to give us alternate viewpoints and ask some very tough moral questions, but all of it falls apart. Now, right at the beginning, the game starts off very, very peaceful. As the story opens, we're playing as Ellie, and we're seeing the nice, safe town of Jackson. This is a really quiet life. We're getting a chance to see that she has an opportunity to flirt with girls. She's working a job. Ellie has her own room. In a world that's 99% taken over by zombies, I think we can all agree that this is a great existence. But this all changes one day when she's on patrol, Joel is grabbed and slain before her very eyes. Now, what's really interesting about this game is that at the start, we spend the first 10 hours of the game trying to track down and seek revenge on every single person that helped murder Joel. And as a player, I think we can all respect that. We can feel her sadness. Joel, to a lot of us, is more than just a fictional character. He's more than just a hero in some video game. He was a father figure to Ellie. He was a brother to Tommy. He was a person that showed that sometimes you can make your own destiny. I've liked how Joel manages to grow and evolve in his character behavior. I've always respected the fact that he really does become a better and better person as he grew up, and that was so cool to see. But the second half of this game has us playing as the killer of Joel, this person named Abby. And I just absolutely despise it. 
Now, as of the writing of this video, I have beaten the entire game twice, and I did this for a specific reason. Now, the first time I beat it on normal difficulty for the review, I wanted to see how combat and boss fights and all that stuff would unfold, but the second time, I played it on ultra, ultra easy mode, that way I could take my time and listen to every single piece of dialogue to try and listen to what Abby actually says. Because if we're supposed to relate to her, I want to see what makes her think because we are shown things like her fears, her hopes, and her friends. But one thing we never get a chance to see in this game is her regret. And I feel that this is very, very important. I mean, Abby, she didn't just kill Joel. She didn't shoot him with a gun or throw him off a cliff. She tortured him to death. They make it very clear that he died a slow, painful end. I mean, this is so traumatic that even the few seconds of this that's witnessed by Ellie, it gives her PTSD that lasts for literally years. They show intense flashbacks that she experiences because of this moment. And despite the fact that there is this terrible, bloody action, not a single time does Abby stop and consider if her anger was correct. So today, what I want to try and do is ask and answer two hard questions. Did Abby deserve to kill Joel? And does the ending of the game downright suck? Now, I think we need to begin by talking about a comic book, and one that really, it constantly set in the back of my mind during my playthroughs of this game. So this is a graphic novel called My Friend Dahmer. It's a story created by this dude who was good friends with the famous serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer back in high school. Now, something the writer shows in the pages of his comic is that Jeff tried to do what he thought was normal. He would reflect other people's emotions. He would tell jokes or even join in on group events, all while inside he was secretly harboring this terrible darkness. Jeffrey Dahmer is an awful person and in a lot of ways he reminds me so much of Abby. In a lot of ways, she has the behavior of a serial killer in that she doesn't seem to understand how to react. She doesn't do things that feel normal or necessary or human. And I think that this is why a lot of gamers seem to hate her is that when we're playing a game, we want to be the hero, we want to save the world, or at the very least, we want a story that fits. We want a flow to stuff that feels natural or indicative of actual human thoughts. Now, what really gets me is that they so obviously display in this game that Abby is a psychopath. I mean, we see her directly walking around in prison complexes that have people that are having their body torn to shreds and yet left alive to suffer. We witness her ruthlessly hunting people down and not once caring about the violence. It's even shown that towards the end of the game, there's this time when she's just doing super savage stuff like here she is, she's shooting. Tommy in the back of the head when he's unarmed. It's really apparent as a character that Abby just lacks empathy. She is unable to relate to the pain of others and she just inflicts pain on so many people with absolutely no remorse. And it makes this even worse because at times this game tries to make you feel bad for her, but no amount of sad flashbacks or fun stories with her dad, none of this makes me see it in any other light. Now, the main argument is definitely, well, Abby also helps strangers. She spends a big chunk of her story trying to protect kids. I still feel like this reinforces the fact that her serial killer nature is still just right underneath. During her chapters, we see how quickly she's willing to just turn on her own people. There are times in this game when you start trying to hunt down the wolves, which is like her old tribe, and if you listen closely, they will call out her name in confusion. She is literally cutting the throats and stuff of people she used to eat dinner with or play catch with. We also witness times where her loved ones, the people that actually try and be with her and treat her like a normal person, even they will just tell her to stop killing for a second. Like her friend Mel straight up says, please leave our lives, you are only good at murdering enemies. It's essential to keep in mind that Abby was one of the top soldiers of the wolves. And this wasn't because she was good at following orders or she did a lot of charity work. They state out loud that she gained power because she was so willing to just slay anyone in her path. 
My point that I'm trying to make here is that Abby is evil. Objectively, morally, psychologically, she is the villain. And no amount of watching her pet dogs or play around in the park, none of that makes up for the fact that she is downright evil. Now let me say something that's a bit more controversial. I do think that it kind of makes sense that Joel had to die. He has led a dark existence, and even by his own admission, he has some terrible sins that will never let his hands be clean. A person like that, they rarely get a chance to peacefully pass away in their sleep. With that being said, I don't think that it was the right move that this game has us play as the person who kills him. Joel dying, it fits the universe. I'm not happy about it. It definitely still really upsets me, but I think that putting that in your game, it does kind of fit. I, I think that if they put that at the end of the game as like a motivation, or if they tried to put it as something to try and kickstart uh, another sequel, I feel like that could have fit, but it feels like such a giant dumb mistake that they just slaughter Joel and then expect us to somehow think that that's okay in this cruel cold world. Now this brings me back to the core plot, because I have seen some people that are trying to defend this game by saying, okay, but the bad actions are done by everybody. This is a game that's just all about the cycle of vengeance, and Ellie herself also does some very, very dark activities in this game. And you know what? I'll actually agree with that. But there is a key thing that is incredibly vital to point out, which is that Ellie regrets her mistakes. She is a human in a fallen land. When she killed Owen and Mel, at the exact moment, it seemed like the right choice. Ellie felt anger and betrayal and was still trying to see those visions in her head of the last gasping moments of Joel. So she pulled the trigger and almost instantly realizes her mistake. These people, they are the enemy and they have done terrible things. But just as that same way, we can see that Ellie actually feels bad about the people that she kills. And you know how we know that? Because she has emotion. Her agony is on her face. She's vomiting just because she feels so bad about the actions that had just taken place. This is the pivotal divide between Ellie and Abby. Playing as Ellie, it has a purpose. It has a mission. When you're doing bad things at Ellie, it doesn't just feel like you're carrying out revenge or trying to get justice. It genuinely feels like Ellie is a good person who's being forced to do bad things. Whereas Abby is an awful monster that is reveling in her own dark urges. There are so many amazing flashbacks in this game that further establish the fact that Ellie has this very concrete set of laws. She wants to try and protect her friends and be a guardian and do whatever it takes to make sure that everyone around her can be as comfortable as possible. And we see this because when she was growing up with Joel, he taught her these lessons. He wanted to be the father that he was never able to be. He wanted to try and make her life just as nice and safe and wholesome as possible and it made Ellie a good person. So the fact that we go from that over to the Abby segments, there was way too much Abby in this game. The fact that we had to play as her for 10 whole hours is just way too much. But this does bring me to the ending because this is the thing that completely destroys the game in a lot of ways. And I've seen a lot of people online who have only watched the ending saying that they're not going to buy the game because there isn't a resolution. The story comes to its climax in California, where Ellie has begun to hear rumors of a buff woman traveling the lands. So she goes here to try and see if she can track down Abby just one last time. And when she arrives, she discovers that Abby was here, but has been captured by a tribe of soldiers called the Rattlers. So in her quest for vengeance, she decides to go there, break into their base, and finish Abby off. Oh my gosh, seeing this gameplay, uh, it still just kind of upsets me. I downright despise this ending. It just feels so bad because the entire point of Last of Us Part 2, it's about cycles. It's about everybody's constantly on this quest to try and get even. Everybody wants to win. Everybody wants to try and destroy their enemies. But the thing here is that there is no conclusion in this game. We break into the prison complex and set Abby free, and as she starts 
trying to climb into a boat to escape, Ellie challenges her to a fight to the death. They punch and cut each other in the shallow waters until eventually Ellie starts getting the edge over Abby. In her defense, Abby bites off two of her fingers, but Ellie just keeps drowning her. Right as it looks like Abby's going to die, what I feel like is a very deserved death, Ellie begins to imagine Joel and decides to stop holding her down. Abby just gets up and she leaves. This ending just sucks. Not because it's trying so hard to be poetic, not just because it's so much of a crappy cliffhanger. In my opinion, it does not fit the universe at all. We have already seen Ellie, she does not mind killing to protect Joel. She has done this in the past. She has not hesitated to slay people to absolutely make sure that Joel and his friends can remain safe. She is somebody that wants to make sure that everybody around her is as protected as possible. She is somebody that is just so good-hearted in her nature. The fact that she would remember Joel in her mind and instantly stop does not fit. This completely breaks the immersion, it ruins the story, and in my opinion this takes it down to being an amazing game down to an average project. They could have done this so much better if they just decided to trim down the Abbey scenes and make this more of an Ellie-focused experience. Even if it made the game shorter overall, I do think that it would have dramatically improved everything about The Last of Us Part 2. But these are just my detailed thoughts as somebody who is a Last of Us fan, but did not care for this game. What did you think about the ending? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. Um, I'm recording this audio in the middle of a giant thunderstorm. I'm trying to edit around all the thunder, but it might be a little bit impossible. I, I do fully apologize if you hear any lightning or thunder. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.